ting, ting, ting. You can hear the Stephen Gray. It's tinging away over there. It's crazy. It's crazy. Everything resonates. All right, here we go. What's happening, boot junkies? What's happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And the other day, I put out a a, a video about the warm audio WA87 microphone, and I said I'd compare it. I, I had compared it to the TLM 103, but I never let you hear that. I realized I never actually did the mic comparison in the video. So going to attempt to rectify that for you good people, because I'm quite sure that you are all going to ask this. I'm recording this before I posted the, the WA87 microphone review, but I'm anticipating that it's probably going to be in the comments. Could you compare it to the TLM 103? Because I, I mentioned that mic specifically in the video. So here we are. We're going to give it a shot. We're going to compare the two microphones and I have to go from memory here because I I only have the WA87 in my uh, in my headphones. I, I don't have the Neumann in my headphones right now. So I have to sort of go th from memory on how these sound. And I'll let you guys be the judge. I don't think I can make a good call between which one's better. I, you know, it's really... To say a mic is better than another microphone, it's really it's a subjective thing. Yes, there are some microphones that are just inherently better than others because there's some flaw in a microphone, uh, like the super cheap, like under $50 microphones. They all go, right? They've got this terrible noise or the EQ is all goofed up. But when you're up at this level, $600, $1,000, there better not be something wrong with the mic. The mic should sound the way the manufacturer intended it to sound, which you have to decide is the way you like it to sound. Because they might sound, they may sound different. They may be equalized ever so slightly different. They may be serving different purposes. Uh, they may have patterns that you desire or don't desire or things like that. But to say one is bad, it's not that it's bad. It's that it's different. Different for each voice. And there are some microphones that are more appropriate for, uh, you know, some voices as opposed to others. If you have, if you have a high voice, if you're a, uh, if you if you're a female versus a male, if you're a, uh, you know, a, a baritone versus a soprano, right? You, you have, you have these you have different voices. And so different microphones will suit different voices. So it's hard to say there's a best. So that's what it is. At least that's, that's my opinion anyway, especially when you're talking up, if you're talking about a microphone that's a, let's call it a $180 and above, every microphone that's $180 and above starts to get into a sound that's intended by the manufacturer to have a certain, to have a certain sound to it, but they should be quiet. Uh, they should, you know, they shouldn't have any hiss. They shouldn't be mechanically flawed or compromised in any way. They should, they should sound like you to to more or less any extent but they will they will sound different so let's just compare how these two microphones sound so if you haven't seen my other video this is the warm wa87 this is a multi-pattern microphone uh, and i'm going to keep it for this uh, review in the cardioid position because that's what we typically use for voiceover i'm not recording drums i'm not recording a conference or a room or something like that so this one can do omnidirectional figure eight and cardioid. I'm just going to keep it in cardioid. It is EQ. There are two switches on the back. I should have this one. Yep. It, there's a, there's a bass roll off switch on this, or you can keep it flat. I've got it flat and there is a 10 dB pad switch on this. So I can turn down the sensitivity of this mic by 10 decibels. I've got it just at normal. And I do that to keep on parity, interestingly, with the Neumann. So the Neumann is four hundred dollars more than the warm and has none of those features it's got no pad it's got no multi patterns and it's got n -n nothing it's just a cardioid microphone cardioid microphone and it is what it is now people will generally believe that the neumann microphones are of a higher quality and so this microphone is trying to emulate this one's big sister, brother, whatever, the, um, I think it's trying to emulate some version of the Neumann U87 microphone, which is this one's uh, big sibling. 
And that one has the multi-pattern microphones. I think it's got a pad switch on it. I don't, I don't have one because they're three thousand plus dollars. Uh, but this one, uh, the the Neumann TLM one hundred three. A lot of people say it has the same capsule, but it's just got one capsule as opposed to two capsules, which allows it to do those multiple multi, multiple patterns. Uh, it's just got it's got one. So they've they've stripped away some of the parts that made the U eighty seven so expensive, and they put it into a condensed uh, just a cardioid mic now for a voice artist i only ever use the cardioid type patterns i don't use figure eight i don't don't use omnidirectional for anything so i don't need all of those other features so if i can get 95 percent of the u87 sound for one third of the price bully uh which is what i did i had used the u87 in studio before many many times i've used it in studio before but i haven't uh, shelled out the cash <laughs> Or one yet because it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, and uh, you know it's hard to hard to justify the uh, the potential diminishing returns on it since there's so many features of the U87 microphone that I wouldn't necessarily use the multi pattern and the pad and all that stuff. Why pay for those features if I ain't never gonna use them? Mm-hmm. So there it is, rant over, tie right over. Uh, but really, I did all of that speaking so I could switch back and forth between these microphones and you can get an idea of the differences between them. I don't have a good enough ear memory, especially for the warm, which is what I'm hearing in my headphones. I don't have a great ear memory for this microphone yet because it's on loan to me. Uh, so I haven't used this one extensively. I'm going to listen back to this at the same time you're going to hear it and going to decide which one sounds best better, more appropriate for my voice is probably the way I should say it. Which one is more appropriate for my voice? Um, What I'll do next is I'm just going to get up nice and close to it. I'm going to give you like a proximity test um, just so you can hear how the tonality of the microphone changes as we get up closer to the microphone. So I'll try and put my mouth directly in between it. First, I'll face into the WA87 just so you get an idea of the proximity effect. I have noticed from uh, from prior recordings with this now that this one definitely does get bassier. It really will bring out the bass in my voice as I get up close to it. Now, the Neumann TLM-103 is normally a very muscular mic that's the word I like to use for this microphone because it does have a lot of deep, rich bass. It really is a is a good bassy microphone. But as I get closer to it, and God, I hope I'm not popping this microphone. This microphone is so exceptionally, incredibly easy to pop. I don't know why. It just is. But as I get closer to it, um, I do find that I can get a very muscular tonality to it. It can really bring out the bass in my voice. So they are both. Uh, they both do have... They do have proximity effect, which is something as a voice artist I can leverage to change my tonality. It does mean that when I record with now either of these microphones, I have to make sure I stay really um, positioned to or, uh, you know, I I have to remember my position in front of this microphone because if I record one take like this and one take like this, not only do I get louder, but the the effect changes. Same thing with this microphone. If I record it at, at this far, as opposed to this far, the tonality of the microphone itself can change. So for a voice actor, um, I do have to be very careful in how I, how close I stay to this microphone. I have to keep that in my memory. And I, I think I have a trick how I do that with uh, some pencils uh, that help me remember how close I stay to the microphone. Uh, and, and But it is, it is somewhat important to remember to stay the same distance from each microphone. Uh, so I did say these are both cardioid. If I, you know, I say this like in all my videos, but if you don't know what a cardioid pattern is, it's this um, cardio means uh, like heart shaped. There's a there's a pattern, a heart shaped pattern. Consider that a heart, right? So, but this point, you see how it curves up. My finger curves up. I'm not making a circle. I'm making this this heart shaped. So what this tells me is this angle right here. So if you put my fingertips right on top of the capsule. It means that there's a lobe of sensitivity that goes out behind the microphone a little bit. So if you're looking at the clock, the hand, the hour hand might be at, say, 10 and 2 rather than 9 and 3 or, or somewhere else that's closer. The cardioid pattern does mean that you can go from side to side on the microphone. Same thing with the Neumann. I can go to the side. And this, the tone and the sound should not drop off 
all that much. It may change a little bit because we are moving around the microphone, so it should change a little bit. But the sensitivity, the relative volume, if I stay four or five inches off either of these microphones, it should stay roughly the same. But they will be very insensitive from directly behind. And this has to do with the way the, the capsules are set up and in their microphones. That's how you can switch them. It's got to do with the uh, cancellation of frequencies is how they can get these different patterns out. But when they've just got one diaphragm hot, it's just... Uh, active from the front it's it's engineering and i probably just messed up that description uh but there is a just trust me just trust me uh <laughs> no don't trust me don't trust me for anything uh you can you can um there's a lobe of sensitivity in front and that's what the cardioid pattern means and as the as you get descriptions like the super cardioid or hyper cardioid that lobe of sensitivity gets narrower and narrower in the front until it becomes um uh, uh, like a, I think the figure eight is the narrowest, maybe among the narrowest patterns, but that one also, as you get narrower in the front, you tend to increase sensitivity directly behind it. So that's why super and hypercardioid uh, microphones, they will have sensitivity right behind them. But as it gets narrower in the front, the lobe and back gets bigger. So figure eight will be uh, really narrow in the front, really narrow in the back, insensitive from the sides. Did you really need to know all that? I don't know. I just really wanted to talk a lot so I could switch back and forth before these mic in between these microphones. So, what do you think? Is there a huge difference between them? Mm, I don't know. They they're definitely probably. I'm guessing there is a tonality change between them. You may have noticed as I switched back and forth. I, I'll label it for you, but um, it's for you to decide. Is this one worth? Om, like 40% more than this one? Is this $1,000 microphone that much better sounding than this $600 microphone? I don't know. I don't know. It's really for your ears to decide. And is this the right microphone for your project? But I'll, I'll, I'll close with this. Both of these microphones are excellent microphones. High quality. They'll last you a long time. Um, they should, in for the most voices, they're going to sound good. They're going to sound good. These these microphones have a reputation for sounding good. They should be flattering for most voices. So, you can decide which of these you think sounds better on my voice, and maybe that helps inform a decision for how it might sound for your voice. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Uh, so go pick a microphone, maybe one of these two, maybe not, maybe some other microphone that you think is the one that's right for your voice, but pick one, pick a microphone and get out there and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.